Continuing on with our discussion of capacitance, let's look now at um, the power and energy associated with the capacitor. You'll recall that we have talked about a capacitor as being a device with two conducting materials separated by a non-conducting dielectric, and that when there is a current flowing, or we can talk about uh, defining a current and a voltage, and that when the current is referenced going from plus to minus, then taking care of the signs, we have that I, the current flowing through the capacitor, is proportional to the derivative of the voltage. A couple of things are implied by this. With current referenced from plus to minus, let's look at what that means in uh, this relationship here. Current going from plus to minus means we're going to have a positive sign here. More importantly, what that's saying is, that when the voltage is increasing, that means that the derivative is positive, the current will be positive. Current will be flowing in this direction, causing a voltage to increase. When the voltage is decreasing, that means the derivative will be negative, and then the current will be negative, or that there will be a net flow of charge from the capacitor. Positive current going from positive to negative voltage, increasing the voltage, we talk about charging the capacitor. When the current is, or charge is leaving, and the voltage or the derivative is negative, we talk about discharging the capacitor. With this reference of current flowing from positive to negative voltage, we now can talk about the power associated with the capacitor, and it will be equal to positive I times V. Power is always I times V. The fact that it's referenced the current is referenced plus to minus tells us that we have the positive sign there. Well I is equal to C dV dt, so there's my I term times V. Now what is power? Power is the time rate of change of energy. It talks about how quickly the energy is changing, how the energy within this capacitor is changing. When power equals zero, it means that the energy isn't changing. The energy isn't changing means it's constant. So if the power is zero, the energy associated with this capacitor will be constant, not zero. When P equals zero, when P equals zero, dV dt equals zero. So power equals zero implies dV dt equals zero, or that the voltage isn't changing. I guess we could even say that, that voltage is constant. How do we understand this energy being stored in the capacitor? Well, we know that a capacitor with a voltage on it has a separation of charge which implies that an E field has been established and the work associated with establishing that separation of charge in the E field is the energy that is stored in there. Adding charge puts energy in taking charge out liberates energy. And so in fact, capacitors become buckets of charge, but maybe more a, a more useful way of thinking about it is that capacitors become buckets of energy, a place that you can store energy. So let's look a little more closely here at power. Power, as we've already pointed out, is the time rate of change of energy, which is equal to C dV dt times V. I'm going to just rearrange the order of that, which is equal to then C times V times dV dt. Now if we multiply both sides of this equation here by dt, we can eliminate the dt's and we get then the differential in energy is equal to C a constant times V a function of t, presumably, at least in general a function of t, dV. Now, we integrate on this side of the equation over dW. We integrate on this side over dV, and we get then energy is equal to C, a constant. The integral of V dV is just one-half V squared, so it becomes one-half C V squared. The energy stored in a capacitor is equal to one-half times the capacitance times the voltage squared. In general, 
V is a function of time, thus energy will be a function of time. And we can write then, work as a, or energy as a function of time is equal to one half C V of T squared. The form of this equation is reminiscent of an energy formula that we've seen someplace else. This is meant to be a spring, not a capacitor. When you've got a spring that's displaced from its equilibrium, a distance x, and the spring is characterized by a spring constant k, you know that the energy associated with the spring is equal to 1 half kx squared. A compressed spring has a potential energy. A charged capacitor has a similar potential energy associated with it. This energy is stored in the separation of charge.